Hello, I'm Jason with CodeLearner.com. In this lesson, we're going to learn about floating point numbers uh, and how to do math with floating point numbers. Now, if you remember in the previous few sections, we've dealt with integer variables. So if we want to define a variable that contains a number five, I might have an int and I call the variable Jason, and later on I can assign the number five to the variable Jason. Integers are basically whole numbers. That's all they can do. They don't have any knowledge of decimal points or anything like that. You can't put the number 2.5 into an integer. So what if you have to do some manipulations or calculations with decimal points? Or if you just need to store decimal point numbers into variables? Well, you need to have a different variable type for that. And the most common one that you're going to use in Java is going to be called double. Now, the reason it's called a double is kind of beyond the scope of this discussion. But if you look up here in the comments, the double is a 64-bit number. And it can hold numbers with decimal points. It's really all you need to know. Um, so for my advice is that for every program you write, if you need a decimal point, you declare it as a double. Now, as we get later on into the course, we're going to learn that there are different types of variables that can hold uh, decimal points. Basically, they're just different number of bits. And the reason that you care about that is because, of course, if, if you define a million variables that are each 64 bits long, it's going to take up more memory in your computer. If your numbers are not that, if you don't have a need for that many numbers after the decimal point, then you can choose from some of Java's other uh, floating point representations, and you can, you can get away with a 32-bit number and so on. So that's kind of getting beyond the scope of what I want to discuss here. I just want to let you know there are other kinds of variables that can store decimal points. The one that you need to be concerned about right now is this one. It's the most common one that you're going to use, especially on modern computers with tons and tons of memory. All right, so it is called a double. You declare it uh, by putting the keyword double in front. And uh, in this case, to illustrate what we're talking about, let's say we're going to convert inches to centimeters. So um, we want to convert inches to centimeters. Now, if you remember, um, there are 2.54 centimeters in every inch. So we're going to need to deal with decimals. So let's declare a variable called inches. And let's declare another double called centimeters like this. So here we have declared both of those guys. And then in the inches, we will uh, set this guy equal to 12.7. All right, so we have 12.7 inches. The question is we want to calculate how many centimeters we have. So what we need to do is we need to take uh, and we're going to assign, we're going to be converting to centimeters, right, like this. And so we're going to take the number of inches we have and we're going to multiply it by 2.54 because that's the conversion factor. This is how many centimeters are in every single inch. So we take the number of inches we have times that number, that gives us the number of centimeters. So we'll go ahead and save that off. Now typically, now we have the value of centimeters from the conversion in there. Typically we want to print it out. So let's go and do system.out.out. Dot dot print ln like this and inside of here let's say uh, let's take away the quotes actually we'll say inches right that's how many inches and we'll do a plus we'll do a space inches is equal to put a space there come out here and I'll hit a plus sign like this uh, centimeters and I put a plus sign here, and I'll open a quote, space, centimeters. Okay, so there's a couple of things I want to point out to make sure you understand. Make sure you understand this line. When we go into the print statement, this is, there's no quotes around it, so it's going to print what, however many value of inches we have. So 12.7 should come out here, and then we put a space. So 12.7 inches is equal to space, and then we put the calculation so it'll be whatever this number comes out to be, and then we put another space centimeters. So it should say 12.7 inches is equal to however many centimeters. Now, one thing I want to point out while I'm, uh, you know, kind of here is that sometimes these print statements can get really long. You see how it kind of scrolled off? And if I had a much longer sentence, it would be off the page here. So in, in Java, you can split these, these long lines anywhere you want. So for instance, I can put, um, I can put the cursor there and I can hit and enter. And if I want to make it readable, I can tab in. So Java doesn't consider the line terminated until it hits the semicolon. So pretty much anywhere in here, I can just hit enter and bring it to the next line. And the line is going to continue to be read by Java until it hits the semicolon. So this might be a little bit more uh, easier for us to read, especially if we're rolling off the screen like that. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And let's go ahead and hit run. And then we have 12.7 inches is equal to 32.257996 centimeters. 
Now one thing I really want to spend just a few seconds here pointing out here is that we've declared these guys as double precision floating point numbers and we've done multiplication between one number that contains a decimal with another number that contains a decimal and the answer that we get is 32.257999999 and so on. So when you see a repeating decimal like this you really need to make sure it's correct. Now I want to make sure you understand that for instance in this case if you go get a calculator out and type 12.7 times 2.54 um, you're not going to get 32.257999 you're going to get 32.258 so this digit here will be rounded to an 8 so the caution I'm trying to throw here is the same caution you're going to get if you read any book in Java if you're doing calculations that require extremely accurate numbers um, then you really shouldn't do it like this. There are special numbers in the Java library that will handle all of the decimal calculations perfectly. The reasons this does not uh, match reality from a calculator perfectly is the way in which binary multiplication works on floating point numbers. So there's a Java package out there that's better suited for for very good precision. So this is perfectly fine for this example because 32.257, most people would round, round this up to 258 anyway, is perfectly fine for an illustration of how we're going to multiply floating point numbers together. It's perfectly fine for most applications if you're writing, uh, you know, depending on what you're doing. But if you're writing an application that's going to calculate people's bank account balances, or if you're going to do any kind of calculation where every single decimal point really is important, then you don't want to run into these problems with, with this sort of uh, multiplication or division of floating point numbers. And so later on I'll show you the, the, the way to get around that. There's certain um, variables and, and classes in Java that you can use that will take care of all of these decimal points here. So the point I'm trying to bring here is that when you see a bunch of nines like this, you can pretty much assume that when it did the calculation there was some kind of remainder that wasn't quite right and that's just based on the default way in which the calculations are done. You know, I can show you something else. If I change this variable from 12.7, if I change it to just 12, so 12 inches times 2.54 and I run it, then I'm going to get 30.48 centimeters. This is exactly correct. So this 30.48 is actually correct. You run into problems frequently when you have both numbers multiplied or divided together uh, or from one another that have um, decimal points in them and it has to do with the way in which the decimal point is represented inside so when you do calculations when you get out three or four decimal points sometimes they can diverge from exactness so this is perfectly fine for illustrating the point but if you're doing some kind of program with extreme precision you just need to be aware of that and in those cases you would use some of the other Java class libraries that we're going to get to later that are designed to handle decimal point calculations very precisely. Alright, so we've done a calculation here where we've multiplied two guys together. We've got a floating point answer which is stored in a double precision variable. Now one more thing I want to show you before I go on. Let's declare um, an integer. Uh, let's declare an integer that's going to be um, number one and let's declare another double that's going to be number two. I just want to show you a difference in something here real quick. All right, So we've got all of this stuff working as usual and then down below this print statement I'm going to do a couple of different calculations. So let's assign to number one the following. Let's assign 12 divided by 5 uh, there and we're going to put the result into number one and then in number two let's assign the same thing 12 divided by 5 the only difference see this is 12 divided by 5 we know we're going to get a decimal answer this does not divide evenly but in one case we're assigning it into an integer so we know that's not going to work right because integers cannot store decimal points in the other case we're going to assign it to a, a double so I'm just going to show you really quickly um, that that leads to the results that we care about so let's do system system dot out dot print ln and in the first case, uh, in the first case, let's just do it this way. Number one, right? And let's go down here, system.out.println number two. So all we're doing is we, we have this first statement of calculation here. We're going to get a carriage return line feed and then we're going to print the, the result of this division here and then the result of this division here right underneath it and we should see a difference so let's go ahead uh, and just for kicks inside of here let's go ahead and do a new line backslash in so we'll get a space between them 
And before I go and calculate everything, I want to make this 12.0 here and 5.0. So in the first case, we're taking 12, which is an integer. We're dividing by 5, which is an integer. And we're storing whatever happens here into an integer variable. Here, we're also taking 12 and dividing by 5. But we're going to put decimal points in there just to uh, have the types match up. So this is a floating point number. This is a floating point double. Uh, and we're dividing them and we're putting it into a double precision variable that's capable of storing decimal points. So we'll go ahead and hit save and we'll hit run and we'll see the difference here. So underneath our original print statement, the first division is going to give us just two and the second division, since it's stored in a double variable, is going to give us 2.4. So what I'm trying to, to tell you here and just kind of illustrate by showing is that when you do division here of integers or of, of whole numbers like this, we know that there's a decimal remainder, but since we're storing it in an integer, it all gets truncated, it gets lost. So just the two survives. When we do the same calculation and store the result into a double, then the whole calculation calculations carried forward and we get 2.4. So just be aware if in your programs you're using uh, and, 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 and have a need to use integers and whole numbers, make sure and store those in integers. If you have a need and you're using decimal points, store them in double uh, type of variables. You can add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. You can use the system out print functions as we've been doing before. Uh, so what I'd like you to do now as you understand this is go on to the exercises and solve those problems and write those programs and build your skills with this in Java.